Hi, it's Lee with Blondie's Boutique. And today I've got a new video for you, but this time, instead of us focusing on just one particular design, this is going to be tips and tricks that you can apply to whatever it is that you're painting, whether it's a dinosaur or a rainbow or a fire truck, um, all very different, but we can still apply these same techniques to whatever it is that you're painting now or in the future. So follow along with me and have some fun. Before I begin painting my main body color, I'm going to take my pencil and go over the details that I know I'm going to want to paint on top of my green. Um, this will help me ensure that when I paint everything green, I will still be able to see my pencil marks so that I can go back and later add those details in another color. So now, you want to grab your sponge brush or your large paintbrush. They work the same um, in applying your base coat. So then you just take your brush or your sponge brush and you dip it in your main color. And then you're going to cover the entire body um, of the dinosaur or whatever else it is that you might be painting. And you just want to cover with long, thin strokes. Um, not too thick because that will affect your drying time and put some texture in your paint that you might not have intended to be there. Um, so you can see I'm also using the sponge brush which works the exact same. tip is that I always paint the sides of my wood signs. Um, in this case, because the whole dinosaur is all green, I'm going to paint my sides green as well. Um, this would apply for anything that you're painting um, that's a solid color, whether it's an apple or a heart or a cloud. Um, and then if I do have a sign that has multiple colors that kind of go to the edge, I'll change up the edges of my piece to match the main color on the body. So my next tip is that I always do two coats of paint, um, especially for my base coat. I want to make sure that that color is nice and vibrant and solid and I'm not picking up any of the wood grain um, that's showing through the paint underneath. details of my blue spots. To do this I just take a smaller brush. Um, you could take a medium or a small detail size brush, whatever your preference, and then go back over those pencil lines that I had drawn in um, before I painted my green. If you can't see your pencil lines anymore, um, you can always take a pencil and redraw some for details and then go back over them with your paint.
One of the last things I like to do on the stuff that I paint is add little white highlights. For this, I use my smallest detail brush and I dip it in the white and I just run it along the edge of my piece or inside the small details. Um, this just gives your piece a little bit more pop and personality. Um, it's absolutely personal preference, but it's just something that I really enjoy doing. to talk about how I like to paint my colors in a certain order. Um, when possible, I really like to go lightest to darkest. So I'll always try to do my white first, especially when white is um, a predominant color, like a base coat or has a lot of it in the piece. Um, in this case, we've got two white clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with those. Um, a, because it's harder to touch up using white at the end and then also it'll get a large section of my piece um, painted and starting to dry so that I can start painting the rest of the colors on the rainbow. do my yellow. I know it's not the start or the end of the rainbow, um, but it is my next lightest color. So I'm going to take my medium brush and I'm going to go ahead and get started on my yellow because I know that the green and the orange that are on either side will be dark and will kind of help give definition to that yellow area. One other tip about yellow is I often um, will use white as a base coat to my yellow. It is not an expectation, but it's just another little tip um, that I wanted to give you. It, that's something that I do. Um, so here you'll see, just to kind of give an example, I will take some white paint and I will actually paint the rest of that yellow rainbow stripe white and I'll wait for it to dry and I'll go back over it with yellow. Um, it just kind of uh, makes your yellow paint pop a little bit more 
and I think takes away a few less coats that you have to do when you're just working with the yellow itself. Next, I'm going to paint with my red. And I'm doing that because it is a whole strip away from the yellow. So this allows my yellow paint to dry and for me to move on to a different area of my project without having to worry about getting wet paint on my brush or um, worrying about blending those colors. So this allows me to keep working, um, but away from my drying yellow paint. to move on to blue uh, for the same reason that I painted my red and that's because it's in a separate area so that I can keep working while my other colors dry. yellow and red paint should be dry, I feel comfortable going in and doing the orange in between.
now we can go in with our green. Now that you have completed all of the colors of your rainbow, go back and apply a second coat to each of the colors and your clouds. Now it is time to apply our tiny black details to our clouds. So with a small brush, dip it into your black paint and you're going to just make small swooping lines that distinguish your cloud shape. some white highlights as well so I took that same small detailed brush after cleaning it and I put it in my white paint and I'm just gonna go back and make a few little white brush strokes on the top of my rainbow strips is actually the flower and that similar to the rainbow is going to be um, really just painting your design in a certain order and priority of colors so you'll see here I've started with yellow for the inside of my flower um, and then I'm going to go on and paint the flower pot in white uh, again because I want to be able to paint with my lightest colors first and let those dry so that way I can go back on and do darker colors on top later.
to paint our green stem and our leaves. So I'm gonna take my medium brush and I'm gonna go in and fill in that space with my green paint. that your yellow and your green and white are dry, you can now apply the pink to your flower petals.
make stripes on my flower pot. And to do this, I'm just gonna take a ruler and a pencil and draw straight lines that go across. And I'm gonna use the width of the ruler to determine uh, my spacing between stripes. And then just take a brush with black paint and fill in that space. flower is almost done and you can certainly stop here if you'd like uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in and add some white details so to do that I'm gonna take my small brush and dip it into my white paint and make small little sweeping strokes all around my design to kind of make it pop and stand out white details are done, I'm going to go back and do the same thing with my black. last design we're going to do the rocket ship and we are going to talk about doing base coats and details again very similar to our dinosaur so with our rocket ship we are going to want to base coat the body of the ship all one color and I've got um, a little window at the top that I want to make sure I don't lose when I put down my base coat so I'm going to take my pencil I'm going to draw around that circle so that way after I put the paint down um, I'll still be able to see some of the circle I've drawn through the paint so that I can remember where I should put my my lines. So now I'm going to take my gray and with my big brush or my sponge brush I'm going to cover this entire section um, and I'm going to be able to paint my details on top of this base coat at a later point in the project.
applied your two coats of gray to the body of the spaceship, make sure it is dry and then you can go in and fill in your circle with the light blue to make the window. While our light blue is drying, we can apply our dark blue to the rest of the spaceship. So make sure that your gray base coat is dry and then you can go with a medium or a large brush into the blue spaces of the rocket ship. underneath the rocket ship.
brush, I can go in and add some red to this little yellow area to make it more of a flame. Our rocket ship is almost done and I'm going to take my small detail brush with my white paint and put little accents and details all around my rocket ship to give it some pop. So I painted a few straight lines on my window to make it look like it's shiny and then I'm going to do small sweeping motions all around just to give it some little fine white details. done. Hopefully you had fun painting along with me and you learned some great tips and tricks to help you paint your design. Have a great day!